from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, rollers of rollers everywhere, whether you're a dice roller or a hair roller. Or you roll, like you like to say, roll over Beethoven, or your dog named Beethoven, and you're rolling over, or Red Rover, Red Rover, hey, Red Rover, roll over. Is that how it goes? You know, I never got picked in that game, but it's not important because that may have guided me to 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 to, uh, to to create this podcast to sleep with me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey, everybody, before we get started here, Sleep With Me exists uh, from a place of empathy and compassion of saying, I'm going to be here for you to keep you company so that you can fall asleep. And when I say that, I say that as a part of multiple communities, and there's a lot of communities and members of our communities that need support right now. And there's links to resources, whether you need extra support right now or you want to be a part of positive change and say Black Lives Matter with your actions, say stop AAPI hate with with your actions or just learn more uh, there's links to resources you could connect with in our show notes because you're a part of this community okay so make sure to check out the show notes in your podcast app of choice and here's uh, the sponsors who enable me to be here for you free twice a week all right everybody scoots here and i have a question that i've asked before why would anyone support a free podcast right who would pay for a free podcast and i've always had my theories i thought i said well it's because the podcast works and the work that goes into the podcast is what makes it work but that really i'm like wait a second that makes it about me and it's really about you you know the show is about you getting the support you need and i'm checking in with patrons who do pay for a free podcast because then I said, oh, well, they say, well, it keeps me company. It makes me feel less lonely. I'm happy to pay for a podcast I benefit from. Those are some of the things I hear from patrons, but I want to hear from you. If you're like, well, I've never, I'm not sure about paying for a free podcast. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Think about becoming a patron if you're in a position to do so. You can listen to the podcast on a regular basis and you want to pay for what you get out of the podcast, uh, whether it's five, 10 or $20 a month. Uh, take a look at what we offer, because uh, some people do it for the benefits. Story-only episodes at $5 a month, all intro episodes at $10 a month, compilations, all-night episodes at $10 a month, and then Ray episodes, Great British Bake Off bonus shows at $20 a month. And, and trying to figure out, is it more about the feelings? You, because you feel good, you feel like a rebel paying for something you benefit from, or is it the tangible goods? You say, oh boy, I get this all this extra audio. In the 10 and $20 feed, there's over 2,000 things to listen to. So I guess it comes down to you, because I am looking to get more listeners supporting the show on a monthly basis. That's one of the ways we're here for you. So think about it, check it out, and then let me know. Say, Scoots, now, nah, if you did this, I might become a patron. Or, oh yeah, I didn't realize how good it feels to be a rebel with a cause. And you can see all that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about Helix. It's the bed I sleep on every single night. I've heard from so many listeners about the experience of buying a mattress the traditional way, how uncomfortable it is, how time-consuming it is, how people are just trying to sell you a mattress that might not even fit your needs. You might say to yourself, didn't anybody fix this? And I say, yeah, Helix fixed it. And here's the thing. Have you taken that Helix quiz yet? Uh, HelixSleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. It matches your body type and your sleep preferences to find the perfect mattress for you. So it's not a one-size-fits-all situation because you don't want a mattress made for somebody else. With Helix, you're getting a mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. And everybody's unique. Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses, mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And there's even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size folks. I took the Helix quiz and I got matched with the Helix Dusk because I sleep hot. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. And it's a bed that fits my needs that I look forward to getting into every single night. 
because I know I'm going to be comfortable. I love the unboxing videos other people are sending out and seeing which model of Helix they got matched with. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. And Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. And I just saw them on another best of list on CNET last week. But all you need to do is go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. They'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Their beds have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up if you don't love it, but you will. And it gets better than that because Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash sleep for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about Apollo Neuro, and this is just an amazing device. It is either on my wrist or on my ankle from bedtime to when I get up, and it's really like having a purring kitten with you wherever you go. It's more like just having the essence of a purring kitten with you whenever you need it, and even when you don't, when it's there in the background purring and you don't even, you say, Scoots, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Apollo Neuro, believe it or not. It is an amazing wearable that improves your body's resilience to stress so you can relax, sleep, focus, and get stuff done. Like a wearable hug for the nervous system, it helps you feel safe and in control. And the way it does it, Apollo Neuro engages with your sense of touch. You wear it on your wrist or your ankle. You could choose the mode on your mobile app. And Apollo Neuro delivers gentle, soothing vibrations that train your nervous system to recover and rebalance after stress. It is absolutely amazing. It was developed by a neuroscientist and board-certified psychiatrist who have been studying the impacts of chronic stress on humans for over 15 years. And it helps take your body from fight and flight to rest and digest. You're going to hear people talking about HRV and all this stuff in your sympathetic nervous system more and more. Apollo Neuro is one step ahead of the curve. It's here already. And I rely on it. It's part of my wind-down routine. It's part of my going to sleep and when I wake up in the middle of the night routine. It's part of my morning routine because Apollo Neuro trains the nervous system to cope with stress better over time. The more you use it, the better it works. And you can get yours. You could try Apollo Neuro today and you get 10% off your purchase. Uh, That's just if you use this link, 10% off your purchase at A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O.com slash sleep with me. That's Apollo Neuro.com slash sleep with me and you'll get 10% off your purchase. Apollo Neuro dot com slash sleep with me and thank you to all the listeners who's been supporting Paulo, letting them know about it letting me know about it uh, thanks all right everybody it's time for the sleepy supporter zone the one part of the podcast i need you to hear it's where i thank the listeners who supported the sponsors let the sponsors know about it let me know about it so the podcast will be here for free twice a week and right now i'm recruiting people for the sleepy supporter zone and i'm looking for everybody that got an air doctor so if you got an air doctor you supported air doctor you used our code you used our link you let air doctor know about it on social media or you gave him a call you sent him an email and then you let me know about it fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors not only will i thank you here on the sleepy supporter zone i'll send you out some stickers when you fill out that form so sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors if you supported air doctor let me know about it let them know about it so they know their partnership with sleep with me is valuable That's how we keep the sponsors. So thank you, everybody who does that on a regular basis. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you need extra resources right now, there's links to resources you can use right in the show notes. And it's about being a part of all the communities we're already a part of. Saying Black Lives Matter with our actions. Saying Stop AAPI Hate with our actions. So there's links to organizations that you could support or learn more in the show notes. And 
And one of the organizations I support is the NAPAWF, the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum. You could support them. You could find out more. You could sign their petition. You could take action at NAPAWF.org. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Zone. Sounds like a near fall. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Write us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story, yeah. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. Uh, the best way to keep in touch with your show, find out updates, is uh, our newsletter, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash newsletter. And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep we do with a bedtime story all you need to do is get in bed turn out the lights and press play i'm going to do the rest and what i'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake whether it's thoughts you know things you're thinking about on your mind uh, thoughts uh so, you know, past, present, or future thoughts, uh, thoughts of physical sensations. So anything coming up uh, for your body, uh, like, uh, or feelings, anything emotionally coming up for you. Uh, whatever it is, it's keeping me, it could be changes in schedule. Like when I'm recording this, uh, not to do TMI, but oh boy, am I having it, one of those uh, Weeks and it's a week leading up to springing forward. Hopefully, you'll be hearing this in the summertime or something. But I, I do not want to spring ahead because my sprung is already like I don't know if it, my springs do not have any tensile strength anymore. But I roll with it. I mean, the one thing I learned by making this show is hey, take it easy. Okay, can't fall asleep, eh? Okay, what can we do? Can we stay calm? That's always the first question I, can, I ask myself. Uh, can we take a breath here? Can we rest? Uh, should we change it up? Should we get out of bed? Anyway, enough about me, because really, whatever's keeping you awake is why I'm here right now. I can relate to what's keeping... I mean, that's what I, my main point about that. But whatever is keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that. What I'm going to do is try to create a safe place here where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake, uh, whether it's, uh, oh, wait, I already said that. Then I'll send, so what I'll do is I'll send my voice across the deep, dark night, and I'll use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Oh, so creaky are my dulcet tones. Just another sign of my imperfection. You say, how do you know that, like, how do you judge the fallibility of a sleep podcaster? You say, well, I, I guess on the, on the great old, the old uh, creak, creaky scale. Scoots is on the, uh, the, he's on the creaky side of Dulcet. Uh, I think he wrote, that was one of the many books he never wrote, so, well, multiple times. And he was, that's how he also got banned from Waffle House, uh, Really? He got banned from Waffle House? Yeah, he started ordering his eggs on the, on the creaky side of Dulcet. Uh, and they said, you, what? Uh, and he said, yeah, I'll take my eggs on the creaky side of Dulcet. And it actually caused like a backup on everybody's order because they said, I think this young man's serious. Uh, and then they went back and they had a conference and they called the corporate office 
and the, you know, on the big, the waffle phone, which is only for, you know, waffle house emergencies, which in this case is breakfast related. And they said, corporate HQ, what's going on? And they, they said that we got somebody here with an order we could, that's, uh, incomprehensible. And they said, inconceivable. And they said, well, not inconceivable, I guess we can't comprehend it. So we don't know if we can conceive it, uh. And they said, well, what kind of waffle did this young person order? And they said, well, young person was just a polite way. He was describe himself uh, in the third person, but he ordered a, he didn't order waffle. I said, okay, okay, really? Went to Waffle House, he didn't order waffles. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, of course. Uh, okay, what did he order? He ordered his eggs with on a creaky side of dulcet, and uh, he just said it, and then he said it again. And we said, "That's how you want your eggs?" He said, "Yeah." And we didn't we didn't ask him to elaborate because it was, he was so confident. So we're just wondering if you have anything in, in the big the big W H uh, da- database, you know, in the history of the W H. Uh, any of the old cookbooks or corporate secret, you know, vaults, uh, anything on a creaky side of dulcet with as far as an order goes, has it been happy? Has it's never happened before? I'll tell you what, uh, as a matter of fact, I can't get into the history of the belief systems of the Waffle House, but I can tell you that this was predicted. One day I was out on a hike and, uh, I came across the cabin, and I got to get to the point, but some the person in the cabin told me, one day you'll get an order from a restaurant. Uh, one day you'll be working in Waffle House HQ. You'll get an order that makes no sense at all. And, uh, like, uh, you'll, you, you don't buy, don't bother with it. Just tell him to order something else. Okay. We'll do that. Tell him he's supposed to, he's not, tell, tell the customer he's not actually in a waffle house and he's not actually ordering breakfast. He's, he's supposed to be starting the intro to a sleep podcast. Is that what the person in the cabin told you? Yes. It was a wise uh, woman. And she told me to tell him to get back to the intro. Okay. Sorry, everybody. It w- w- drifted off there. Uh, so, I'm gonna say, oh, whatever's keeping me awake, I'd like to take your mind off that. Send my voice, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. I think we just got a dose of that. So I'm going to go off topic to keep you company while you fall asleep. But the thing is, a couple things about this show. One is, it doesn't really put you to sleep. I'm more here to keep you company while you fall asleep. That's why the episodes are over an hour, so you have plenty of time to drift off. And even if you can't sleep, I'll be here. I'll be here to the very end. So just kind of see how it goes. And so that's one thing. The other thing is this is a podcast you really don't listen to. It's more of a podcast you barely pay attention to. Kind of like that whole thing you may have been listening. You say, what is this? Is this a thought experiment? Uh, it, well, two, is there any belief systems based on Waffle House? I would say 100% guaranteed. Uh, good, Everybody deserves good breakfast. And a good breakfast every day makes everything go pretty good for, you know, Waffle House's way if you eat there and, you know, many other things. So so, so it's a podcast you kind of just barely pay attention to. Is uh, So don't really listen. You don't like, uh, you kind of just, uh, just like you say, what is he babbling about? And it, you might be new, you might say that, and you say, oh. And then if you become a regular listener, you say, what's Scoot's babbling about? And then if you become like a super fan, you say, huh, what's Scoot's babbling about? Waffle House, I might barely listen to this one. So those are two things that for new listeners you got to get used to. And that's totally normal because, I mean, I, I would be skeptical if I t- tuned into this podcast uh, and listened to it for the first three or four times uh, for sure. Then I would be more skeptical about, uh, you'd say, oh, yes, like you got to view Scoots with some skepticism, but some sort of positive version of that, where you say, I'm, he's, I'm skeptical it'll ever make any sense. And also, I wonder if the Waffle House really does have a waffle phone, 
or at least they might have one at HQ. So those are a couple of things. And the other thing, if you're new, that can throw you off is the structure of the show. So the show starts off, it's a very unique structure because it's a very unique podcast, uh, but everything kind of serves a purpose. So the show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you feel welcome and seen. Then there's business and uh, so there's the listener support. Then there's the sponsors that support the show. So there's some resources for listeners. And then there's how we keep the podcast free. And so those that's the next part. Then there's an intro. That's where it really steers like uh, the intro is around 12 to 20 minutes long of me explaining the podcast. And so at first it could seem onerous. You say, what do you mean? Like, I got to sit through all this? They say, well, no, it's kind of a, it serves a purpose. Uh, the show's designed in a way. And it's definitely not for everybody, but that's why you got to give a few tries. Like, the intro is meant to introduce a new listener to the podcast, but it has a new nonsense every single time. So that the regular listener, like, so you can't adjust. Like, whatever part of you is keeping you awake it can't get used to it and say, well, I know Sco-. you get people say, well, I know Scoots is going to talk about, uh, is he going to imagine he's at a waffle house tonight again? And uh, like that may happen one every, once every 333 episodes or something, but not much more often than that. So, oh, so, but the intro also serves as a wind down for most listeners, not for every listener, I understand. But as you get used to the show, the majority of listeners start listening as they're easing into bedtime, whether that's getting ready for bed or relaxing or getting in bed and getting comfortable uh, versus this show is just not designed to put you to sleep instantly. For some people it does, but not the majority of listeners. And that's great if it puts you to sleep instantly. But so it's meant to kind of ease you as a part of your bedtime routine. So you could be doing some other calming stuff. You could also adjust, like 3% of listeners skip the beginning of the show and they start the show at around 20 minutes. I just heard from a reviewer who said they start the show at 30 minutes and then they set a 30-minute timer. And that's a unique way to listen. And, And if that works for them, so you could kind of see what works for you. I mean, if you like to listen all night or you like something like, you know, being a patron is always an option, but there's a lot of ways people adjust the show to that works for them with the free show. Uh, But so the intro eases you into bedtime. Then it'll be our, uh, then there's business. uh, Then it's our episodically modular story, a journey into land of tomorrow that you can listen to in any order. This happens to be like a recap, look back episode. So a great way to start it out or finish it or just fall asleep to it. And then there's thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. And the reason I make the show is because I've been there last night, every other night over the past uh, while I've been there. Uh, Trouble getting to sleep, oh boy, big time. And then trouble staying asleep, big time. So I know how it feels. Uh, you can probably hear it in my voice. And, and I say, okay, well, let's just get another, give it another try tonight. Uh, so I know how it feels out there. And, and like even today, I say, man, man, it, like uh, I'm more vulnerable, I feel like, uh, emotionally or mentally. When I don't get enough sleep, I can't flourish or even be, you know, you know what I mean? And so if I can help you with that, while this show does not work for everybody, I really hope it can help you because you deserve a good night's sleep and you deserve rest. Uh, I mean, just like I say it to myself, it's like, okay, it's not happening right now, but we'll, we'll get through it. And we'll just take it one day at a time and we'll see it. You know, we'll try to do our routine again tonight and see if that works. Uh, and so I hope sleeping me could be part of your bedtime routine and help you get to sleep it really would be, be my honor. I re- work really hard on this show. I yearn and I strive, and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time to upgrade your apartment. It's time to upgrade your home, but do it the easy way. Go to livefeather.com and use the promo code SLEEP and join the furniture revolution. Just like music, just like movies, why would you want to own something that you want to change on a regular basis? Just like the majority of people don't want to be locked into watching the same movie every night, do you want to live with the same furniture forever? Because I don't know about you, but I've moved enough times and lived 
lived in enough places to say, you know, you know what? It might just be easier if there was a service that I could just rent furniture from, but not just any furniture, furniture that's stylish, a furniture that's well made and looks good. And that's why you got to check out Feather. I mean, people move between six and eight times before they hit their early 30s. Feather is a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. They save you money. I mean, furnishing a one bedroom can cost upwards of $6,000. And with Feather, you can furnish a bedroom with high quality, beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill. The delivery team brings the furniture directly to your home in as little as seven days. No setting up a separate delivery through a third party. So you could go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything. Just picture that. New chest of drawers, a new nightstand, a new bed frame. And they have everything. Rugs, lamps, wall art, and more. And then let's say you move to a different place, different layout, maybe a little different style. No problem. You can easily get furniture that works for that space. Plus, by renting from Feather, you're choosing a sustainable alternative to fast furniture that won't end up in landfills. Feather has changed the way I look at furnishing, because I know I'm going to be moving at least a few more times in the next four years. And I'm tired of putting furniture together with a little wrench then I'm just going to put on CL for free in a year or two. I want something that looks good, that works well, but is hassle-free. And that's why I love Feather. So try a new way to furnish your home. Right now, Feather has an exclusive offer just for Sleep With Me listeners. If you go to livefeather.com and use the promo code SLEEP, you'll receive $500 off your first month. That's livefeather.com and use our promo code SLEEP for $500 off off your first month get over there and send me some pictures so thanks everybody all right everybody it's time to talk about my summertime companion whether it's work time it's daytime it's nighttime it's time to cook dinner my air doctor is at my side and you know one thing i haven't talked about in these spots is that the air doctor really looks good because if it's in my daughter's room you can leave the lights on it acts as a nice little night light but the one in my room i put it on sleep mode so there's total darkness Uh, but you know with the summertime with allergies with pets going in and out with all of us getting outside when we're inside we want to make sure the air we're breathing that our family is breathing that our loved ones are breathing is clean air air doctor is a professional quality air purifier with a medical grade ultra hepa filter that's been independently tested to remove 99.9 percent of tested bacteria and virus plus everything else including pollen pollen, dust, dust mites, and smoke. That's 100% of particles at 0.003 microns in size, which is 100 times more effective than ordinary HEPA purifiers. I love, let me just put it, there's a lot to talk about, but let me just put it to you this way. I love my air doctor. I love being able to breathe through my nose. And I love the peace of mind that the air doctor provides. And it has this amazing auto mode, which takes the guesswork out of clean air and has a laser air sensor that detects air quality automatically adjusts to the correct filtration level. That's the most important thing about the Air Doctor. It works. And a professional quality HEPA air purifier is recommended by leading medical experts as an effective way to reduce airborne germs and viruses and protect your home. So make sure you get an Air Doctor to keep you and your family safe. No more allergens, no more pollutants, none of that dust that makes me sneeze. Capture contaminants and chemicals with a medical grade ultra HEPA air purifier that's 100 times more effective than ordinary purifiers. Go to airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code SLEEP to receive a 35% discount off their classic Air Doctor 3000 purifier. Air Doctor comes with a no questions asked 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you don't love it, just send it back for a refund. Just go to airdoctorpro.com and use the promo code SLEEP and you'll receive a 35% discount off their classic Air Doctor 3000 purifier, but only if you go to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com and use the promo code SLEEP. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, this is Scoots here, and uh, it uh, this is a, a, a normally our look back episode where we're looking back at the series we did, Journey into the Land of Tomorrow. And it's kind of where I kind of unpack stuff and 
look at it. I think this is going to be a two-part episode, so I'm going to talk for a little while, and then I'm actually going to try to turn it over to the DM and the players so they could look at the game. I thought about doing it as a one, but then I said, well, they might not want to know that they're fictional characters in a fictional game playing something fictional in a world that's fictional. So that might be, you know, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta think of their good night's sleeps as well. So let's see, where does it all start? So Journey into the Land of Tomorrow, for those of you that are like, if you're listening now, I'm here to keep you company and put you to sleep. But if you're saying, well, I want to listen a little bit uh, as I drift off, but I didn't listen to any of that series or I didn't hear it. I listened. I, ne- I neither listened nor heard, Scoots. Uh, your voice was present in the same room as me, though. And I say, fair enough, that's my job. But, but yeah, let me give you an overview of the concept uh, as it kind of came to me. And it, the concept and as it kind of came to me kind of ended up developing in the way I wanted it to. I mean, not without a lot of unforeseen things. And I think I already talked about this a little bit somewhere. But so right now it's 20, March 2021 when I'm recording this. And I, I started recording this a series in 2020 at some point. I have no idea when, maybe late summer or something, but uh, or fall, I don't know. But so the idea was, well, the initial idea or curiosity, it, it, it was interconnected. The, all the ideas were, I don't know which idea came first, but at some point I was DMing a, a ga- game with family members. And I was like, huh, could this be an episode, like uh, just one episode or something of people playing D&D? And then I said, no, it doesn't have to quite. Like, I think I even recorded a little bit of one of our games. And I said, no, nah, that doesn't really work. It uh, doesn't have enough. Uh, like, it would be more of a parody. And, and that's it. Or... Like, it just didn't have enough, I don't know, there to say, okay, that's it, that's it, gets, gets greenlit by Scoots. But I said, hey, kid, I like your idea, so keep them coming. And they said, well, what if it was fictional? And I said, well, tell me more. And this part of me pitched me. It said, okay, so you have a, a fictional group of friends playing a board game. And I said, I like, again, I like the idea, but I'm not quite, uh, there's not quite enough layers there for, uh, like, I can't see, I can't see it yet. You, you come back to me with more. And I'm not sure which idea came back. Like, it's part of, this is when I'm on my walks or taking a shower, you know, or sitting around when I'm trying to do something else or go to sleep, these ideas come up. Uh, and I'm not sure which of these two came up first, but it came up with two more ideas. Uh, it said, well, what if they're not playing in our world? Or I guess maybe more than two ideas. And I said, okay, like that idea. What if they're playing in a former Walt Disney world after, and it said the same theme park, like that the girl from a theme park series is set in, but at a different time, not her t- not the same time she's there. Because you said you really liked that uh, series, but it, and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone there. I like what you're saying. So this would be a and d game that doesn't exist in our world at all. Any of the layers of fiction, except for the fifth edition rules. And that part of me said, yeah. So basically, they'll be in a different time. They'll be in the same world as the girl. They'll be in a non-fictional world to them. Of the, the same non-fictional world, the, the girl in the theme park, uh, the girl who was raised by a theme park or may have raised a theme park series, took place. This was a series you did three or four years ago. Maybe I have no idea. And it never had a title, so it's kind of hard. I think the all-night versions are on the $10 and $20 patron feed. I'm not sure. You know, I'll try to put some of this in the notes or something. I, I'm not uh, I'm not my own historian. Uh, my, my memories are history. It's not even meant to be a pun. That's just a fact. Uh, but it's also put it on a pillow. So I wonder if your synapses would say, say, yeah, your memories are history because we already passed them on. And then it took four microseconds. Like they're four microseconds old by the time they get to your brain, your thinking, your consciousness. And then they're another point and do two micron seconds uh, old before they get to your mouth. And most, most people's mouths, by the time they get out of your mouth, Scoots, it's a whole second has elapsed. 
And I say, okay, that's a great, uh, great to know. So anyway, back to this pitch. So, okay. So these players exist in the same universe, real universe as the girl in a theme park. Yes. But afterwards, after everything that happened, they exist in her future. Okay. Cause she does something important probably in their world. Yeah. So they actually have a belief system based on her. Okay. I like that. Uh, so does the game take place? At, like, so how do we, how do they play it? Like a role-playing game though? Oh, the role-playing game it takes place in the past, in their mythological past, in their mythological past. Okay. What do you tell me more? So before she became the girl in a the theme park, you know, there was a world that was ripe for change that had already changed, you know, it become, it was like our world and then it became like their world. Okay. So let me back this up a little bit further. So w w if this was our timeline, we would be in the before time. No, like you said in the early episode, you're in the before, before time. Then this game takes place in the before time. So after your time, which is after, after our time, but before her, before her time, which was before their time, which is the after time. Okay. So could we break that into like, uh, d d letters? Uh, so they're, they're playing in, so the time they were playing in, let's say it's like, like 14, it's been thousands of years. Scoot sets probably beyond your understanding. Okay. But the ga the time they're playing it would be the, uh, the CT, current time, right? So they're playing in 14 CT, we'll just say. Sure, but it's not 14 because that would be... Okay, I get that. But uh, so 14 CT. Then the girl in the theme park, she existed up until probably like Z zero CT or something. Scoots, you're projecting your own belief system onto this belief system. You're right. You're right. You caught me there. Maybe the, okay. So basically they're playing the game in the future of a future of a future. Yeah. This is sleepy stuff, Scoots. It is. And in their r r past is the girl in the theme park. It, her, her, her present is in their past, but b before she, before it was their, her present, it was the past, uh, so there's a time before her. So they're playing a game set in an abandoned theme park before she arrived. Right. Surrounding mythological events that may have led to her existence or to the events around her existence. Okay. So that makes sense uh, a little bit. I mean, normally games are even more for... It'd be interesting because we really don't... I'm sure there are more like... Uh, yeah, so that is interesting to me. But I guess if you have a like a formal like a theme park that's been abandoned, I mean that's ripe for playing a role playing game in, especially if it becomes uh, okay. So I like that idea. Let's make it into a series then. Okay. So how do you how do you propose narrowing the world? Should we just brainstorm and so this is what happened? We brainstormed. And at the same time, my daughter, like somewhere around this time, so this would have been 2020, early, mid-2020, in, in our time that I'm talking to you, but in your past, I guess, and somewhat of my past, my daughter and I took like a Khan Academy course or something like about Imagineering, and I came up with, the, like we were supposed to come up with a new theme park, and I said, well, I'd rather redo Tomorrowland and Disney World. And that was also an influence to make this series because you said, oh, well, there's a contained part of Disney World's too big to do this in. Just like the Sword Coast is part of for the Forgotten Realms, you say, okay, which part of you, okay, and then narrow it down even more to like, uh, so he said, okay, we'll just set it just in Tomorrowland. And then it was cool because we got to like try to find some blueprints and, and reimagine. And I mean, of course, this is fictional, so it's not, uh, don't hold me to it. And then I was kind of basing some of the d DMing I did in real adventures and then researching and reading a lot of adventures to say, okay, how did they do that in that adventure? And then I was kind of letting go of some of the rules, but also using the rules and then also using the inner. The nice thing was uh, with this great idea that uh, came to me from somebody 
some forgotten part of me was that it offered a lot of layers. Uh, because, okay, so we had this world building possibility of the theme park, uh, which was part of the adventure module. Then you have whatever the crisis and uh, challenges are. And you say, okay, so it has some mystical element because we know from a girl with a theme park and we'll put some sort of time, time thing on it. And they have a very clear end objective, but they have to reach, you know, they have things, there's a little Indiana Jones in there with having to get the pieces to complete their objective. So that was cool. So there was those things. Um, and then there was like, okay, who are the characters? And then, so there's characters and then they're doing, playing role-playing, they're playing roles. So before this series started, I said, okay, here's the characters. And, uh, but then I got to place the characters in this constraint where it's like, no, they're not just the characters. They're the characters playing the roles of their characters. And then also just as I was brainstorming, I don't know how this came up, but the idea of kind of starting it, uh, because I don't know, this is one thing I learned from being a D DM only briefly, and then like trying to look at stuff is like uh, sometimes the start of it was better to start uh, in the action because of, like the beginning of the game, it, like uh, it's just there's a lot of like to dos and like information gathering and interviews. It, it, like it feels like a lot. Of, like you say, how much this D and D game or even. Uh, Skyrim, I say, how many interviews do I got to do? Like, what am I running an interview podcast here or on an adventure? Like those games, what are those called? Like the for, like video role-playing games. I end up like spending, whether it's uh, the three ones I played within the last five years have been uh, the Cowboy one, the Cowboy part one and the Cowboy part two. Never finished. I don't think I finished part two because it left the game pass. Uh, then Skyrim, maybe, oh, uh, one or two others. The um, Spaceable, whatever that recent one was in the last two years as popular. And then the outing of the, f f when the sky, like Skyfall falling out. Uh, but I always end up just walking around the countryside. Uh, because he said, well, I'd, if I go to a town, I got to do all these interviews and go open doors. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so he said, okay, let's start it. And I said, that'll make sense because as I tried to, feel, like one thing I learned the very hard way, way, way back, and I retested out the theory, is that uh, you have to have a limited number it's not a matter of like character voices or characters. It's like stakeholders. Uh, like, cause when I did super doll, that was our largest cast. Uh, and because it was superheroes, they kind of all had an equal stake. They were all stakeholders in each episode that they were all in. And I found that to be too many stakeholders. So like, so I said, okay, how can we keep this, uh, with a limited, like a manageable amount of stakeholders, like characters or active characters or whatever you want to call it. Because if you have too many active characters, it just does, it, it's not, doesn't go, it just becomes too much uh, to handle, especially like for a sleep podcast. Uh, so then I said, okay, probably four is probably the best, uh, like number. And I can remember, yeah, I can remember like in October, you think we were already recording these or September, like being like, okay, uh, this works because then I said, okay, well, one character could have a sidekick. Uh, then maybe the DM has to play one of the characters. It's not a hundred percent clear if it's, cause it, well, then we start to think about the types of characters and the people playing them. And then it also was like the mechanism of the game, role-playing game is like, okay, the cool thing is that they, if you have the right, like we got the right balance of stakeholders to have like a personal conflict or interpersonal conflict. Uh, and when I say that, it sounds like sometimes they could fall in the ears the wrong way. It just means that not everything is in consensus or 100% agreement all the time. And, like, obviously, I always know consensus building is not easy. Uh, and so, and that's, like, kind of, at least from my brief time, it's like, unless you have a real dominant person, 
like in a game, which we didn't have, uh, the players, it's more, it's better if everybody's a stakeholder and you build consensus when you can. But at the same time, every round is going to have a different level of where the people are at when they get to sit down to play the game. So I said, okay, those offer a lot of opportunities for meanders, for, for like going in, like take it, like for zooming in and zooming back out, uh, for speeches. I mean, you want to talk about consensus building is great for a sleep podcast. You say, well, I'd like to, I'd like you to hear my point of view now. And you say, okay. And that could always, you can always kind of like dial those in and out. You say, well, this one they're going to agree on. Seems pretty obvious. This one, I don't know if they're, and then you say, okay. And then how are the real people playing the game influencing, right? Like, uh, like sometimes you're not going to want to build consensus because you're, you, or the DM might say, well, uh, I'm going to make, like, you know, we're human beings or, or this idea is like, uh, it's not making it realistic. It's making it relatable. So I don't know. Those all offered opportunities. And then it was like, uh, like managing the, the, the different parts of the adventure, which was fun from like a world building perspective, a writing perspective of like taking what was there. Oh, and I guess it could close out with like just imagining. So I did try to imagine what would, how would they redo Tomorrowland and Disney World realistically if they were really going to redo it uh, in this current, like in, in you know, in the, the, what do we call this, 2020s or whatever? Because you'd say, okay, like a lot of times the reboots have been all or nothing, right? They said, okay, we're going to do this vision of the future or this vision of the vision of the future. So my idea was this is all like it's a celebration, like it was like a role-playing world. I don't know if this came across because I didn't have a a total number of amount of time. But like the idea would be that it's a Tomorrowland that's a role-playing place. So. The Tomorrowland is people playing a role like, like, a, like a, let's see if I can explain it. Like, the idea is that that area of the park becomes a place to celebrate different visions of tomorrow. And maybe it's in the future too, like wink, wink. Like, uh, and so there's like Streetmosphere players like playing people, like playing a role, celebrating, or, or are they? Like that part of it could become more gray, like you say. Okay, these are the people that love the Victorian steampunk future, and they have a pavilion dedicated to it. And they're even like trying to get you to come or get you to eat their snacks, to have the steam driven corn or whatever. And then, the, like, there's the corporate dystopia, there's the anti dystopia, you know, like, uh, and that it would be like each attraction. And then the Progress Tower was like, oh, this is kind of the Disney esque, uh, ultra modern version of the future. Space Mountain would be kind of rethemed to a funky, fun future. I didn't get to the other side of the park because it definitely would be making that Tron ride and then the Autotopia, you'd have to redo those somehow. But I also thought about it like uh, this one, they would use the characters from Carousel Progress would be part of the queue for these different things. And that would have been the new big thing they would build. It's like a hotel with three attractions built into it. So you'd finally get a hotel in the theme park, super expensive probably, but you know, that's how they build that stuff anyway. And I thought that would just be interesting also that it's like, oh, they never got this. This was a reboot of the Tomorrowland that that the future passed by. They didn't even finish re-theming it uh, before times changed and theme parks were no longer a thing. So, yeah, I think that's it for me. I'm going to turn it over to the game players and see, like, uh, what their thoughts are and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, appreciate you uh, listening to the season so far. Thanks. All right, everybody, come on. Let's uh, sit down because I have this scheduled. Uh, I have our time scheduled a little differently this week. Uh, so to do a debrief, and I just wanted to say up front, I really appreciate everybody's uh, involvement with this game, your patience with me. This is my first time DMing. Your enthusiasm really came through in a way that felt authentic to me, but maybe, you know, I, w- I want to do a debrief uh, to just talk about how it went for everybody 
and uh, hopefully we could play and you know do another campaign one day soon. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I really feel like my connection uh, to her is stronger now. And thinking about, I don't know, I really have been doing a lot of thinking. I know interpersonally this game like it offered us a lot of chances for development, or at least I did, because I felt challenged at times. And there were times I had to go and I said, talk to some people outside of the game and say, hey, what do you think I should do about this? Uh, and I said, well, isn't the game supposed to be fun? Did you forget? You're supposed to have fun and the players are supposed to. Have. And I said, oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. And all the all the prep and stuff. Uh, so I just wanted to take a few minutes and then, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, we won't go our separate ways. I hope, I hope we're going to go do something right. Uh, so that should be fun. So thanks everybody. Uh, and yeah, I don't know if anybody wants to take, go ahead. Uh, should we stay in roles or how do you feel? Uh, yeah, this is Eleanor. I'm happy to stay as Eleanor. So I kind of like uh, processing where we're at because I think as characters we we could have the interpersonal thing you know in our uh, where, where we go out private you know where we go out together as a group and this could be the debrief for the game and the play the characters maybe you know I'm sitting here uh, and I've been thinking about uh, Wada and Darmok and. Uh, you know, especially with my newfound, I, I appreciate what you said because my newfound connection to the three Florences and hearing and then starting to study so, some of uh, Dharma, what would uh, like a uh, granada of Dharma, I believed is uh, I, I feel like I have a new level because the three Florences are not intimidated by the idea of my belief system expanding. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that Shaka, when the walls fell, uh, and, uh, you know, I think about Tanagra now, but, uh, so that's one thing is thinking about how well that, how that, and then Wada being in another magical realm and already having a friend, at least with the, with the CC and the steam beings, you know, as a player, I'm comfortable with uh, what happened with the wizards that had a. Uh, they seemed to have been too tempted by the access to a magical realm to another world. Uh, that uh, you know they stepped too far, clearly, uh, you know, out of their lane, and uh, I believe that they were up to something. And they were going to try to take the staff from us and use it to try to control the portal, which would have failed. I think now with the remaining members of our party, we have to decide, like at least even in the interim, uh, like w I, I've, I've thought about it and I'm happy to discuss it with uh, Zell and Lord Von Schill is, uh, is like uh, where we're going to store. I think we should put the gem somewhere, and I have an opinion about it. Maybe we discussed it last week. And that then we should dedicate ourselves to exploring as adventurers uh, in the idea of d keeping the, the, the gem safe. We don't know if the, the portal could ever be broken out of the, the gem. But I think that, that that's what I see our role as, exploring, learning to live together or separately, because we really haven't figured that out. Uh, and we had these discussions, the Lord Von Schill, you know, really impacted me of saying, well, what if we put aside our notions of what relationships should be or even what we feel inside and say, well, like... Uh, like, what does that mean, that expanded idea? Especially now that it is the three of us, uh, like, what is it? What would the three of us look like in, in a comfortable way in this world? I mean, just in this world, like, where, where would we, would we keep moving? Would we camp? Would we establish our own home homesteads? I think we should probably each establish our own private area for retreat and rest at times. 
Uh, but those are my thoughts. Oh, as far as, uh, you know, with those thoughts being, if this adventure was only a pastime, like years from now when I look back at this adventure with the perspective of uh, my entire lifetime, I would say this was a very enjoyable adventure that uh, I was surprised at every turn because uh, this was something I just hadn't, the adventure hadn't been on before. It was, uh, air, we got to go in those uh, happy, ha- handy halls. We, you know, I re I lost my link to the Florences. I never knew that I could even, ha- I mean, I knew I could have some distance from them. But I was able to reconnect with the three Florences and, you know, get my my connection to their, you know, spiritual power back. And, you know, I'm interested to see what the rest of this theme park uh, is like. And it, that in my understanding is it's very large, like the size of a large city as far as the land goes. So I guess those are my thoughts. Uh, Lord Von Chill, you seem to be uh, looking and thinking, too. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Eleanor. You know, I am, t- I'm still quiet and subdued because, uh, you know, I've long, you know, I- I'm still coming to terms with this is where we'll be. And I think, it, you, you know, and I've learned a lot from, from, from Zell and Eleanor and even Wada and Granada of Darmok and the forces that drove this adventure have taught me many things. And it is this idea of what I wanted and what how I thought, you know, as Lord Von Chill, my manner, my estate, uh, all the more things I could achieve in my lifetime, my legacy, my family's legacy, all those things are now not an option, seemingly. And will anyone know the, 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 the and I guess it's not important to me, that, that actually is soothing. I say, will anyone know, you know, what we did, what we did here? Uh, probably, maybe not, and maybe that's okay. And is this an, I, I've been set out on an, un, what could be more adventuring than an unexpected adventure? So in some sense, I'm I'm thrilled, but, it, and, you know, I'm also not thrilled, you know, at the same time. So, you know, I need to come to terms with that. Losing, of course, uh, Granada of Darmok, uh, not a sidekick to me, uh, like much more deeper than that. And, and um, you know, like I lost part of myself, which I guess, and then I say, well, this is, so this is a new beginning for me. And many, many way, way more ways than one, I'm, I'm wondering what it'll be like. I feel like a child again. And I say, well, maybe I could be grateful for that opportunity. And then think about WADA and CC and every, like, it, was any of that real? I also have this ominous feeling, you know, when we looked out at that tower, technically, I guess that tower is outside, not just of the, the, this, uh, this immediate theme park within a theme park complex, it may be outside, like, is that sealed off or not? Uh, and I know we've speculated about it and we're not sure. And when we look out on the horizon that maybe there's even another tower further in the distance, uh, so I'd like to adventure there, and, and I'd like to check out the uh, the boundaries of our territory. Maybe we could do that first, maybe not. I don't know if we could talk about that, uh, or maybe have a time of, you know, solitude and, and retreat, as you pointed out in some sense, uh, Eleanor. Uh, so those are my immediate thoughts. I'm proud to be... Uh, associated with uh, the two of you and, and our other companions. And, yeah, looking back, I've never been on an adventure, you know, like uh, I've never been on an adventure like this. You know, Eleanor, you weren't there for the first part uh, where the adventure already became un- unexpected. You know, we went to the town outside of the theme park, the last rem- remnants of... Uh, you know, like like you know, where we could get supplies and gather information, 
and you weren't here for that. Uh, and then our journey into the park, it was another We And those were where we started to lose. We lost some players to there or adventurers. Uh, and I think part of it was uh, this was a new experience for the person behind the scenes, the, the wizard of, 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 of uh, but behind the scenes with this adventure. Some people just weren't willing to let somebody grow. But, I mean, I think it was also maybe he said, well, if you're not here to have fun, then maybe you shouldn't be here. Uh, if you're not here for an adventure, what are you here for? And so then you joined our party, Eleanor, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, and, you know, we haven't had too many direct challenges, but some indirect ones. And, you know, I'm still trying to come, come to an understanding of what it means to be a Florentian nurse and uh, live under the three Florences. Some of it sounds very intriguing to me. So I hope to learn more over time. And I guess I look back at our adventure. We say, okay, so we started out uh, when Eleanor joined us. And the venture felt small, you know. Uh, we were just checking out that one building. And we talked to that robot thingamajig, the, the, the curry bot. And then we had to get rid of those plush gators. And then we had to deal with Skippy and... The be you know that other animatronic, that big animatronic, and that wasn't you know we we really grew grew our skills, and then we went into the steam. We got some rest with the steam genie, and they saw the steam giant would become uh, would come back in our adventure. We never saw the steam genie again, or did we? Did we? Did we find any parts of the steam genie? I can't remember, uh, but. Uh, is that was quite an adventure as well, uh, uh, and then heading into the, what was it Buzz Tomorrow and the Emperor and the little, little green people and, uh, and 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 we're going through that and, and then that was when we started to have some. Uh, it was like the part part way in were we fully in the adventure because you know you lost your power. Zell lost her trust in Wada, understandably, Zell, you know. And then we uh, we got through that one, and we went into— but th there was some close ones in there, right? Because you couldn't even heal us. Uh, we're in the handy halls. Maybe we could— Is there? I wonder if there's more handy halls we could check out. Uh, but I don't want us to get distracted. But it, it was cool. We danced with those— uh, Animatron. We we did we met a lot of great animatronics. Then we left it there, and it was, that's when the steam giant was in a new place. Or I don't can't remember. Then we snuck around, and then we met that family, the Carousel of Tomorrow family, and some of them worked with us, and some of them did not. And we went up to Progress Tower. That was another, uh, not a, like, uh, it wasn't even our main adventure, but we had to deal with that. That was another wizard up to troublemaking for us. I wonder if that wizard was associated with the other wizards or not. Uh, and uh, then we, we, because of Wada, that was the first time in any adventure I'd ever been transported, like, uh, like where we all fell asleep and then we got moved. And I said, well, they, they should do that more often. And so I liked, I really liked that because that was surprising. And it was, it was a little bit different having the DM play a character that was nearly a main character. But I think, wow, it was Wada fully fleshed out. Like mostly, I mean, it was good that Wada was quiet. Uh, but pow, but I felt I could feel I could feel the looks on Wada's face a lot of times, especially when Wada was focusing on magic. So yeah, there's those things. Then we got out of progress tower. Then we were trying to figure out the steam giant. Then now this is the one that kind of sticks with me. And then says uh, this is going to be quite the adventure because those beings we dealt with and the the veteran and and those other beings. Uh, that was a challenge, a pretty big challenge, right? And and we had to get through that. 
but th- they were saying they were part of another group, uh, and they were supposed to go, and they had those flares uh, that we still have with us somewhere. So I have a feeling that, uh, you know, resting easy will not be, you know, that we should be aware. But, not, you know, not, this is a large park, and I think we have uh, some advantages. I agree that I guess we should come up with a general plan for rest for now. You know, what's next, but our current what's next is to yeah figure out how are we going to best protect that gem and uh, wh- wh- what shall we do for that? And then, you know, how shall we live? We'll, we'll be discovering every each day at a time. Uh, but overall, I, I can't. And then, oh, yeah, and then we met those dan- I would like to, I wish I would have seen that attraction with the dancing goof uh, teaching, you know, peace through dance. And I guess I'm ready for a new start. And like I said, maybe things don't go the way I want them to or expect them to. But maybe that's part of my adventure is saying, well, can you be okay with that? But I'd also ask that if I'm taking risks, uh, that other people take a risk to say, well, let's just see what's, uh, you know, let's find our comfort zone, but let's uh, find the edges of our comfort zone too, you know, as we relate to one another. So that's, I guess that's all I have to, I mean, I mean what, what, a, what a time. I'm, I'm so happy. Uh, uh, but Zell, what do you have to say about things? You've been our leader, and you know not a you know not a leader by uh, attitude, but a leader in uh, you led by leading. We probably already said that. Uh, go ahead, Zell. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I can't say much more. I have to be honest. Like. Uh, like uh, maybe I don't have the space right now for Wada and Granada because of I think what you you both have pointed out is what are we going to do? and I have an idea so I'll, I guess I'll run my plan by both of you because I think yeah separating the staff uh, uh, back into two pieces and then taking the gem should be our primary purpose. But I think we already have the conditions for that. Uh, we have the the um, whatever it was called, the Space Mountain Dance Off, or whatever. And, you know, up on top there are those um, poles that already had lights for flying things. I was thinking we could put the gem. I'm pretty sure we could put the gem inside of one of those lights up on the top. And I say that for a few reasons. I think that building is already already still, and I think we could probably talk to the guardians of that building that will be there. We could see if we could get that wizard back because that wizard left, uh, but where did that wizard go? So that's one thing. And if the wizards sworn to protect magic at all costs and the spectators... And the other floaty floats, uh, and then you know, maybe we'll have to learn some of Granada's skills uh, to to reinforce some things. And if we could teach that wizard to use the flares or set some kind of thing up with the flares or something like that, then wherever we are, like if something somehow new, like there's not really a chance of that, but if something new that the gem was there then we would know that they're going there and we could get back. Uh, but it'd be really hard to get to and really unlikely to say, well, let me go on this. I mean, I can see someone saying, let's go on top of that mountain. So we'd have to go, like, uh, but as opposed to hiding it somewhere else, uh, that's somewhere, uh, hiding it in plain sight, but hiding it somewhere where we could most of the time know like maybe there's even something we could do that it's like, oh, we noticed something changed up there. Even if it's flags or something flying that someone would probably disturb if they were disturbing things. We don't want to call attention to it, though, either. But that's what I would think is that uh, if it was up there in a fairly protected building anyway that we could reinforce uh 
and keep people out of. I mean, the steam giant's still functioning too. So the steam giant could, we can probably repair the steam giant maybe. And yeah, then that's kind of part of our mission. So that's one thing. And then I agree. I think, I guess I agree with Lord Von Chill that, uh, and Eleanor, maybe we take some time, you know, we rest, we, we have separate areas of rest and retreat. We can work in shifts and t- together, but we also have a together space inside of uh, Disco Space Mountain or whatever it was called. And, you know, as we're working, uh, you know, we're, we're also taking time to re- recover from this, you know, quite, quite, a, uh, quite an intense adventure we were on. And we're trying to figure out our relationship between the three of us, which will take some figuring out. Uh, like, uh, you know, how do we keep this adventure? Will we encounter anyone else that adventures with us? But I think resting and then exploring the boundaries is probably a good idea because then we kind of know what we're dealing with. That could take quite some time. So we'll have to come up, but then we could start, you know, we could find as much map material that exists and use that and, and, uh, really do some mapping. So I think that would be important. I mean, the other big question is, and this is why I'm, I'm trying to stay open-minded is, okay, we do have that other party or, and there may be other, other parties or other wizards here. So we should keep that in mind, but also this, like the, the, the effects of the portal that we've already witnessed, like how much of that was portal open specific versus how much of it leaked into the park and became part of the park. Also, I'm having experience of, uh, the steam spirits being, even though we can't see them. I don't know if anybody else is having this experience or maybe I'm the only one feeling it of like that they are like uh, childlike uh, in that maybe the protectiveness of the portal for the two of you is like uh, infantile is the wrong word. Childlike is not, doesn't quite answer it either. Yes, yeah, this is Eleanor. I'm having the same experience. I just couldn't put it to words. I, th- I was feeling it. Uh, Lord Von Chill. I know what you mean. I guess I was feeling protective like that, like stepping in front of someone and saying, whoa, you know, stand behind me because I could be in the way. So maybe that's another part of our adventure. Our mission is, uh, but it was also something we need to learn more about. Yeah, I think it's something we could learn more about. Maybe we could find a way to communicate. I don't know. Can we or not? Uh, I'm asking that out loud in case the steam beings wanted to answer us or the, like, but they haven't. Uh, I mean, overall, I'm really impressed because, uh, in my opinion, the adventure has allowed us to become us, uh, as a party and as individual adventurers. And when I look at the progression of our characters, while we could have progressed more, or but the challenges created challenges within our party, which I think is uh, like uh, really impressive. And when you think about our all our individual backstories, um, I think we've all. I mean, Lord Von Chill, and I mean, holy moly, your entire backstory. But even mine of like, uh, you know, I, you know, I had goals as a as a person uh, to 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 take what I had earned adventuring and open. You know, I had these uh, hopes and dreams too. You know, and I mean, and more vague ones of just adventuring and you know, bring, you know, bringing justice and equality and dignity and respect to, to communities. But, uh, so it's like, okay, well maybe some of those broader values could take place here, but to have an adventure that, uh, and then Eleanor, I feel like we're still getting to know you. And then, yeah, like a Granada's influence on all of us and Wada's influence, uh, 
I, I think it was a good adventure. And then, I, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I, there was times I didn't have fun, but maybe that was also, uh, or, or, or times I was impatient and thinking, you know, thinking, uh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll have to explore how we're all going to get through this. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to our next adventure, but also our adventure as a group. And that just doesn't include a group of three. Like it includes a group of four friends, uh, whatever the other in, 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 in interpersonal relationships might be. A group of four friends that have gotten to, uh, have just started out on the journey of friendship together and started to see one another in a way that says, hey, wow, you really put a lot of work into this adventure. Wow, you really you gave up a lot, and maybe it was uh, part of the story, and you didn't have a choice, but you did have a choice. Uh, so I don't know. I'm I'm happy, and I'm happy to be with all of you, and happy to hang out. Now we're going to go out dancing, like uh, to, to uh, like I can't believe the, the DM some breaking character, I guess. But I think I love the idea that we're going to go out dancing together. So, so this place plays like a 70, it has each 30 minutes it changes kind of themes. So we will be like Dance and Goof. Uh, and I can't wait to, like, did everybody bring something to change it? Great. So we'll change into stuff. And we'll have, like, peace and depth of our relationships through dance. So I'm really excited. I'm really appreciative. Maybe we could all lie down, though, and just close our eyes and rest before we go out dancing. And just get comfortable and say, okay. And embracing one another in the spirit of friendship and kindness, uh, love and dignity and respect. Uh, and to say, you know, Temba and, and Shaka when the walls fell, uh, Jalad and, and everything that I can't quite remember. Uh, yeah, you, let's rest. All right, I want to thank everybody that reviewed the show on Apple Podcasts recently. Uh, Pixel Burner from Australia says, try it more than once. Podcast is great. I've uh, never stayed awake through the whole thing. Very effective. Uh, review, there's a couple, sometimes there's reviews. I think it's more about uh, the dignity and respect of the podcast. Uh, but this is a reviewer that helps to say, what all this is is talking. One star. Then Sable says, works wonders for me. If you're the kind of person that likes falling asleep to TV, shows you've watched a lot, this is a perfect podcast to have on the background and put your mind at ease. I'd say give the episode a few tries at least to help me get a, help me a ton get back to sleep when I wake up early. I just lean over in my phone, my phone and rest for a few minutes. Uh, then King does not like that there's the ads again, but it's just, I mean, it, I don't, yeah, that's just how we keep the show free for everybody. Uh, and then this is another one that says, thanks, question mark, no thanks, one star. Jennifer LD from Australia says, can't sleep without it. Started listening seven years ago, and uh, first time I tried it, I didn't sleep, and uh I didn't like it, but I uh, came back a while later, gave it another chance. Now I can't sleep without it. Uh, I've been a Patreon supporter for years. Best money I spend on my health. There are other less odd uh, sleep assistance podcasts out there, but this is the one that works for me. Then Astra Sleeps it says, uh, no problem sleeping four stars. I listen to it for years now. Most of the time I fall asleep in 20 minutes. The times I don't fall asleep is either because I can't relax, nothing to do with the podcast, or, you know, not every episode works for everybody. And sometimes they skip to the middle, or they normally skip to the middle and set a timer so they don't get waken up by the next episode. Great strategy, like set it at 20 or 30 minutes and then set a sleep timer for 30 minutes. And uh, they don't like the ads, but again, I don't know, like, uh, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, and it's not just a matter of the ads just have to be in there. Like, uh, I guess, like, a weird we were sport we were talking about this at the end of the show. But uh, I understand, yeah, in a perfect episode, the, the podcast would be free and it would have no ads. But that's just not possible. And it's not possible 
The sponsors want their, they, they like, way, place that place ads is where the majority of listeners are awake. And, I mean, the sponsors are paying for people to hear the ads. Uh, it's not underwriting where they don't care if anybody hears it or not. And, I mean, that's tough. Like, it's tough making a sleep podcast, believe me, and keeping it free. But, uh, yeah, that's the best, uh, that's the best compromise I could come up with other than, you know, you know, I talk about this a lot. I mean, good, the good news is that uh, because people are hearing the ads and it's like, that means this is like the like the last 18 months has been the only time we've really had a big, big like success with the ads. So anyway, I got to get moving here. Magpie says, uh, fall asleep smiling. And NYC Jen says, just perfect. And then C Fry says, uh, love sleep with me. So thanks, everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, oh, Sleep With Me does exist. A free podcast can be able to support the show directly on Patreon or support the sponsors. And we grow this podcast by people spreading the word. Uh, so sharing it with somebody is a huge help. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to tell you about our referral program here. Thanks. All right, everybody. Sleep With Me is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And, you know, throughout May and June and all summer long, Sleep With Me is proud to join the cause of destigmatizing therapy. So if you're having a tough time with relationships, you're having difficulty sleeping, difficulty meeting your goals, if you're feeling anxious or stressed, BetterHelp counselors can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, and it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And BetterHelp's therapists have a broad range of expertise that might not be locally available in your area. It's available for clients worldwide, and it's so easy. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. You can schedule weekly video, phone, or even live chat sessions. Sessions. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. I've heard from listeners that have utilized it. I know people in my personal life that have utilized BetterHelp. And it's just taking that step. And I know the flexibility and the ease of use with BetterHelp has started to expose more and more people that I have regular contact with. Uh, to online therapy. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. You have to use our link to get that discount. That's betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. BetterHelp. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash sleepwithme. That's right, everybody. BetterHelp. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, before uh, the episode, like, uh, or after that, I'm here after the episode saying, hey, uh, if you get a lot out of the podcast and you say, well, Scoots, I want a free way to support the show. A free way to support the podcast is to go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You can earn cool audio rewards. You could even win a set of sleep phones. Uh, but it's just a great way to support the show. Bring new listeners on. You just share your special link on social media and you get new people to sign up for the show it's a huge help for the podcast and uh, you get some sweet rewards it's sleep with me podcast.com slash refer sleep with me podcast.com slash r-e-f-e-r thanks everybody and good night